Welcome back to another round of War Robots with Stupendous. <laughs> so, this is actually post-commentary on this video. I, as you can see there, I started the recording late. I had forgotten to start it and uh, also didn't start my audio stuff. So, <laughs> that's where we're at right now. But post-commentary on this round, I uh, just wanted to go through and kind of analyze the battle because this ended up being actually a new high score for this account. But it was it was ripe with mistakes. So mistake number one is my positioning of this griffin. When I started the round, I knew exactly where I wanted to go. I wanted to get to this spot and help hold the line for this beacon so we could get the beacon faster. This is domination, not beacon rush. Um, I've been trying to play that a little bit more lately because you, you need to be a lot more... like There needs to be a lot more strategy with it instead of just going out there and spamming bullets. And uh, I find that more fun than just spamming bullets. So anyway, that Griffin, I way over positioned. Uh, I didn't need to be that far ahead. And I could have done a lot more damage. The Punisher Griffin, he's one of, he's like my main guy, like at every level of play. And I just burned through him in like 30 seconds, <laughs> which is totally unnecessary. With the bots that were coming in, that Natasha would have been able to damage me but I would have been able to use my jump to evade at least the initial salvo. Um, but that Lancelot, I could have torn into a lot. He had that Zeus on there, which would have which would have hurt. But the Tehrans, which were doing you know a lot of the real fast damage, I could have avoided those completely just by staying outside of 350 and tearing through his shields for my teammate and everything. And I mean, it, it worked out the way that we aggressively moved up. Uh, with the teammate that ended up coming with me, but that's not something I was counting on. You know, I was counting on doing everything myself. So anyway, that ended up being a bad call and something that I shouldn't have done. So make sure you don't learn that lesson from this video. Um, you know, what you saw, listen to my my battle analysis here. Um, and then with the Pinata Patton, this is, this is one of my favorite setups at this level of play because it puts out so much damage in such a short amount of time. I mean, basically, each each clip you're putting out like between 35 and 40,000 damage in like a second and a half. So it's really good for stopping people in their tracks. It's really good for finishing people or for, you know, getting an initial burst in and then your teammates have a lot easier time taking them down because their health pool just took, you know, <laughs> you, you just drained like a quarter to a, um, a quarter to a half of it in one clip but yeah it's a hit and run guy so make sure you're in and out it only takes just over a second and a half to dump your clip so make sure you plan that with your clip you know how much is recharged and then with the enemy clip how much they've dumped or or how much you've been able to promote them to dump uh, make sure you keep that in mind so here's another example here um, I had that teammate up there and so I think I must have been I must have been thinking that you know, it was safe to move forward, but really there was no reason to move back up to this position. With both of the bots that were coming in, they were obviously coming in even if I was shooting at them or, or whatever. And I had the ability with my Tarants to stay outside of their um, range completely, like with that Death Button Griffin right here, or with the Carnage, um, I didn't need to move in. So that, that was another mistake and I ended up burning through my Ragaka really, really quickly. So. Anyway, <laughs> so there's that we had going on too. Um, <laughs> so it's just, it was just funny to me. I wasn't expecting it to be, like I expected it to be a decent damage round because that's just what happens at this level of play. Um, I expected that, but I didn't expect this to be a new high score, um, like over a million damage round kind of thing. So there's a lot that could be learned from, <laughs> you know, from the way that I've played in both regards, like the, the, poor, the poor judgment calls as well as some good calls that I made. So uh, make sure you drop a comment below, let me know what you saw, um, or maybe you can go back through and watch the video <laughs> with me muted, and you can just go through and watch the gameplay, you can figure out you know what, what were some good calls, how like I was able to achieve that kind of damage with level 4 to 6 equipment, um, and that kind of stuff. Um, and that, <laughs> I didn't think that this that guy was going to go all the way over there, and so I was trying to sneak around the front of him. I figured it would be um, my safer bet. Plus, I'm then I, my range is closer to this Griffin too, trying to chip away at him. Um, so trying to pop in and out of cover there to <laughs> minimize the amount of damage that I took. But <laughs> my uh, my Natasha got torn through pretty fast. I actually forgot to take this Natasha out before 
um, starting recording when I was playing this round, I'd forgotten to take it out and put in something uh, better suited for domination. I had already played a round and I, I was like, okay, next round, I need to remember to take out the Natasha because it's no good on domination. <laughs> I mean, it, it still can do some good, but it's not my preferred thing to have on there because it's decently slow and with the weapons I have on it, it takes so long to get into effective range that um, you get torn through just like what happened in this round. So I really, really thought that this Vityaz, I thought he was gonna tear straight through me, um, but I ended up uh, being able to get around the corner and take this guy out. I started firing sooner than I would have if I had had more health, and so I dumped a bunch of my clip into the wall, but I was just trying to deal as much damage as possible around the corner um, into that guy. So I wasn't super worried about losing the Natasha because I had seen that Rhino coming around this way um, towards my team, and a lot of people struggle with the uh, struggle with rhinos and, and approaching them at this level of play. And I knew I had a death button griffin left, so I figured it wouldn't be that big of a deal if I ended up jumping into my DB griffin. So, and again, same with Pinata Patton. The death button griffin is, I I believe, I think it's best played as a hit and run guy. So I'm using this Ancelot as cover. So Dracula actually ended up. Um, he invited me after this, and we played a couple rounds together. Um, he's a really good player. He's the second top scorer um, in this round. Uh, and uh, yeah, he had a really, really good round too. So uh, great player. But yeah, so I'm using him as cover since, you know, that's basically the point of an Ancelot is to have <laughs> both energy and physical cover. So um, I was hiding behind him to minimize damage from the Fujin and from anyone else and to move in and help turn the center beacon as fast as possible. Otherwise, he would have been taking heat for 10 seconds, but. Um, with me moving in there with them, we were able to turn the beacon in five seconds. So, uh, food for thought there. So, um, we're able to, to clear these guys off the map, and now we're in a, a three to two game, and the beacon bar is getting closer, but it still looks like we've got a pretty good shot at victory here. With the Rhino moving into center, I was a little bit worried. I wasn't sure if that was going to end up working out or not. And I was uh, kind of apprehensive to move forward because I wasn't sure if he was looking at me or at somebody else, but as he was looking at somebody else at the moment, I moved forward so that as fast as I could, you know, as soon as I hit 310 meters, I could start firing into him um, and take him out really quick. And then same with this guy, make sure you're conserving your ammo. Um, I, a lot of people I see at this level of play, especially when, when you're going in for a kill like that, they'll dump more ammo than is necessary to, to get the kill but you don't need to do that. So as you saw me jumping there, as soon as he got taken out, I stopped firing, or right here, for example, I'm corner shooting with one side while circling around uh, with the other side. That side's allowed to fully charge up, and now with my jump ready, um, I knew that this was a Leo because of what he had fired. Um, I saw multiple uh, pinatas firing, and then I also um, saw and heard thunder um, when I was recording. <laughs> that was just funny, uh, talking to a room for no reason because wasn't recording so there's that <laughs> but yeah so I knew that that was the case and so I, I assumed that I'd be able to take him out especially with the combined pressure of my teammates and then uh, same thing here waiting to charge up waiting for the jump and then with the comp combined pressure um, of myself and teammates we we're able to take that guy out so again lots of <laughs> lots of decent lessons I think we can learn from the gameplay here um, on, on both sides, so good things and bad things. A lot of bad calls, but it ended up working out for a decent score at least. But uh, for me, I, I prefer over a score. I prefer feeling that I played really well. Um, and I, I was obviously valuable to the team like with a score like that, but, um, but for me, I have a lot more value in like a good cerebral, exciting round in that regard. So um, a couple of you guys asked in the last video, since this is a new account and I'm starting up, if I could show the first, uh, the top two players, or the top players on both sides. And so that's what I'm doing right now, is just showing you the top players on both sides. And so here's my account right here. Um, new high score, so you can see the, the max damage up there. That's a new one. I think I added like 30,000 damage from what my previous high score was. So anyways, thanks for coming and checking out the video, guys. Make sure you do drop a comment below. Let me know what I could have done better. Um, other people can read the comments and up their gameplay based on your comments. So. Thanks for checking it out and I hope you have an amazing day.